Hello, my name is Emma. You may also know me as Made in the Moment. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I find my secondhand yarn and sort of why I do it. I've been meaning to make this video for like five months now, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it until today. So here it is. Let me know if you have any other questions once you get to the end of the video. Leave them down below. I'd be happy to do follow-up videos or just to answer them right in the comments for you. I want to just start with a little bit of a disclaimer that I know not everyone will have the same access to these resources that I do living in a bigger city in the United States, and that's okay. It's okay if you can't always afford to or have access to the most sustainable resources. At the end of the day, consuming less is better and reducing my carbon footprint, etc., is part of the reason why I source materials secondhand. And the other reason is that I just find it really fun to have a certain amount of a yarn that I can use in a certain color combinations and to have to create something out of that. So before I get into any of my tips, I just want to start off with a couple reasons why you might want to start buying secondhand. And the main thing for me is that honestly, it's just cheaper. You save money and you can get higher quality materials for the amount of money that you're spending. So you're basically stretching your dollar. It's also obviously better for the environment, the planet, to use materials that are already existing instead of purchasing things that are being made specifically for you. And like I mentioned before, it's just a fun challenge. You really can get out of your comfort zone. You can explore different kinds of yarns that you maybe wouldn't purchase full price, but you know, if you see it somewhere and it's $5, you can try it. Before I go into specific places that you can look to purchase secondhand yarn, I'm just gonna start off with a few general tips. The first thing is to kind of have an idea of what fiber you're looking for or what color you might be interested in before you start looking. You might kind of find something else along the way, but it's a good idea to have like a starting point, especially if you're searching online. If you're looking for a specific color from a specific brand, you probably won't find it unless you get really lucky but you might find an alternative that you end up liking better in the long run anyway. And then the last thing is just to try not to let yourself get too carried away with the prices that you might see and just the fact that it's like guilt-free shopping because it's secondhand. You should still be aware of how much you're consuming, how much you're spending, and just be like realistic about how much space you have to store the yarn that you buy and if you're actually going to use it for your projects. A lot of times when you buy yarn secondhand, it comes without a tag, so you don't know what the weight of the yarn is or the correct hook or needle size to use. Here's a helpful chart from the Spruce Crafts that kind of outlines the different names for different yarn weights. It can be really helpful to go to like a big box craft store or uh, your local yarn store and just kind of feel the yarns and read the tags, see what the yarn weights are, and this can help sort of develop your skills at being able to identify and decide which hook size to use or which needle size to use on a yarn that you have without a tag. And then you should just get comfortable making little gauge swatches, especially if you're following a pattern that has gauge or has recommended needle sizes or hook sizes, as that's going to be kind of make or break for a lot of projects. Now I'm going to go through my pros and cons list for a few different places that you can look for secondhand yarn. eBay, Facebook Marketplace, thrift stores, and then local secondhand craft supply stores. So first up is eBay. One of the big pros of eBay is that there's just a huge amount of options and the search engine is really good. So you can search for really specific fiber content, for colors, yarn weights, brands even. So that's a really great place to start. You can also bid on items, which sometimes can get you really good deals. And there are a lot of international options. When using eBay, you should really take advantage of the specific search engine. And this is where it's good to have an idea of what you're looking for and search by color. I do recommend looking out for listings that look like they're drop shipped where the pictures maybe look too good or the deals look like too good to be true, just kind of be careful and don't get scammed. Some of the downsides of eBay are that there is just so much volume that it can be kind of hard to wade through everything and even figure out what you want. And then the bidding feature can also be a little bit addicting 
So you want to be careful with that. I try to just not go on eBay very often unless I'm looking for something specific because it's really easy to get kind of sucked in and just keep bidding and trying to get really good deals and then realizing, oh no, now I have to pay $100 to all of these different people. But if you're willing to be patient and go through all of the options, the next site is Facebook Marketplace. Some of the pros of Facebook Marketplace are that you can get a really large quantity of yarn for kind of a lower price. People tend to price things a little bit lower on Facebook Marketplace than they do on eBay. And there's a lot more local options. And there's also international options. Again, this kind of will vary based on your area, but if you're willing to pay for shipping, then you can open your search a little bit and kind of get more access to what other people are listing. I would recommend that you start by looking at your local area. So for me, I set my radius to a mile just because I live in the city and it's really hard to get around anywhere. So I first look there and then do local pickups because I just prefer that than paying for shipping. And then if I really am looking for something specific, then I'll expand my radius to a little bit larger of an area. Some of the cons, I already kind of mentioned them before, but it can vary a lot based on your location. Again, I live in a city, so there's usually a lot of things on there and it's updated pretty regularly, but depending on where you are, that might not be the case. And then most people do price things pretty reasonably, but some people are just trying to make a profit. So the prices can be a little bit high as well. And then kind of like all of these options, it can be hard to find something that you like and it can take a lot of patience to be going back and checking and sometimes communicating with the sellers. So Another place you can look for yarn secondhand is in an actual thrift store. These can be great because you can get yarn at a really low price point. Although sometimes they do price things by the skein, not by yardage. So you might have a 100 gram skein and a 50 gram skein that are both priced at $2 regardless. But either way, it's usually pretty low, so it's not a significant difference. The downsides of thrifting yarn are that it can just be really difficult to find. Most thrift stores don't have a dedicated like craft section or a dedicated place for you to find yarn. So you kind of have to hunt around for it and you might end up commuting somewhere and then them just having no yarn at all, which is quite often the case. And then yarn can also be kind of dirty or gross at thrift stores and you can always wash it. There's some really great tutorials on YouTube of how to wash yarn, but you might not be interested in kind of going through all of the extra work to do that. If your thrift store doesn't have any yarn, you can also thrift sweaters and then unravel them and use that yarn for your projects. This is something that I've been doing a lot recently and it's been really fun. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about this, you can go to the unraveling subreddit. And I also have a couple TikTok videos sort of walking you through the process of how I did it. Thrifting a sweater for yarn is great because it's usually at a really low price point and you can get a ton of yarn and oftentimes really high quality materials as well. I recently thrifted a 100% cashmere sweater for $7 that ended up being about 300 grams of yarn when I was finished with it. The downside is that this can be a really time intensive process to unravel the whole sweater, wash the yarn. So it might not be great if you don't have a lot of time or if you're a beginner who doesn't have tools that can help with unwinding like a yarn winder and a yarn swift. That being said, thrift stores can be a great place to find secondhand yarn if you're willing to be patient and check back in often as the stock usually changes pretty frequently. Another place you can look is your local secondhand craft supply store. This again is going to vary depending on your area, but you can look up and see if there's any businesses in your area that sell craft supplies secondhand. In my area, there is a store that is opening next week actually called Make and Mend. And I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just kind of obsessed with their mission and their branding and everything. And basically they just collect all of these donations of secondhand craft supplies, and then they resell them at a really, really great price point. So they have a website and they do ship. So if you're not in the Boston area, you can check them out still. One of the pros of this site is that it's highly curated. So you're not digging through a bunch of stuff that you don't want and everything is in really good condition. Okay, the sun is the sun is shining on me now they also have a locals only section if you do live in the area for larger items that you can go and pick up there's really no cons that i can think of for this site except that i don't think they do international shipping and just like any purchase online shipping can add up pretty quickly because of the pandemic they've been online for a while but they're opening up an in-person store soon and i'm really excited to go visit 
and check it out. So let me know if you want me to kind of vlog that or just talk about my experience there. I highly recommend Googling around and seeing if you can find a secondhand craft supply store in your area because this is a really great way to not only support small businesses but also get some art supplies for yourself at less than retail price. And then to wrap up the video, I'm just going to be answering a couple of general questions that I got on my Instagram. So the first question is, how do you judge yarn quality online? How can you tell if the yarn is soft enough? So this one's kind of tricky because you basically can't tell if the yarn is soft enough. Uh, but this kind of goes back to my point earlier of just getting used to feeling different kinds of yarns and seeing maybe what certain brands feel like and definitely what certain fibers feel like. That way you can get a bit of a sense of what something is going to feel like based on what it looks like in a picture. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell on eBay or Facebook Marketplace from the picture, but usually you can contact the seller directly with any questions that you have. The next question is how to identify wool yarn versus acrylic yarn. For me, this is just something that I can kind of tell based on feeling it, but I know that there is a burn test that you can do. So you can cut a small amount of the yarn and then near water, just in case like the, something else catches on fire, just light the bottom of it. And if when it burns, it burns quickly and the smell kind of smells like burning hair, then it's wool. And if it burns a little more slowly and it smells like plastic, then it's acrylic. This is obviously a little bit of a risky test, but if you really can't tell the difference and you really want to know, then that's something that you can try. Someone else asked, how do you not feel dirty? And the answer to this is I wash all of the yarn that I buy secondhand. So I'm gonna link a video below of how to wash your yarn. But basically you just put it into hanks, wash it like you would hand wash clothes, and then let it dry. And that usually kind of gets the job done for me. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to leave them down below. I'd be happy to make a deep dive video into any of these websites that I kind of briefly mentioned. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on knitting, crocheting, and just kind of sit down videos like this talking about the process. Have you ever bought secondhand yarn? Did you enjoy the process? What did you make with it if you did? And now are you thinking about checking out any of these places that you hadn't thought of before? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you next time.